Howdy, this is Terry, and I've lost 180 pounds with keto, carnivore, and counting calories. Don't forget to click that like button and look at the description of this video. I have all kinds of links, and on my homepage, you'll see a bunch of playlists for how I lost my weight. Thank you for watching. I appreciate you. Doing a little mini meal prep um, in case my sister and brother-in-law have not eaten and in case they want something to eat. I'm going to make up a little bit of something and then if they are not hungry, then I will have something for myself. I forgot the liner, so I'm not going to sweat it, but um, I'm going to go in with just a little bit of water, about a cup of water. Let's get this seasoned. We'll do our badia complete. We're going to do some ground thyme. We're going to do some seasoning salt. And when I'm done, we're going to flip it over and do the other side. Then we're going to do some garlic salt. Right now, it's still in that little, that little mesh thing that's holding it all together in one piece. Later on, that was garlic salt and seasoning salt and a little bit of sage. I know a lot of you also have said that sage goes really good on pork. So, let's get this flipped over. Okay. Go back in with some sage. It's like I said, it's real frozen right now, so... Once it defrosts, I'll probably take it out of that little, you know, the little mesh thing. So I'm doing the same seasonings on the other side. So this is frozen solid, solid. <clears throat> so it is, hmm, what time is it? It's seven o'clock at night. So even when it's not frozen, it's like about 12 hours. So I think this will be good because that will be 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, about 17, 18 hours. So I'm just gonna leave it in on low and I'm just gonna let it go all night. And that's something I'm making. I've got one package of thick cut bacon. I am trying to redeem myself after I burn the last batch. So I got it at 400. I'm going to check it in 20 minutes the first go around, and then I'll check it every five minutes so I don't burn. So I've already done this fork test once, but I'm going to go ahead and do it again. That was earlier at about six o'clock. It's twisting in the meat part my sister had taught me and then I saw Lori do it and so evidently that must be a common thing so if you can stick your fork in and give a twist then that means it's done so I am going to pull the meat out and put it in this and I'll be back with you so I put it in here and I've pulled it apart I'm actually going to put a little of the juice back in here because my plan is well I don't really have a plan but if my sister is here for lunch, then we can pop this in the oven and heat it up. And so I want it to have some of the juices in it. So I am going to put this back, or I'm just going to cover it and um, <clears throat> put it in the refrigerator for now. And then if, if they are going to be here to eat, then we will put it in. In the oven. If they're not, I will microwave it for myself. Because you know I, I'm all about that microwave life. So I put this in the refrigerator. And there is our main meal for the weekend. My bacon is done. I think it took about 40 minutes. But this is thick cut bacon. And like I said, I, or like I always say, I like thick, I like my bacon to be pretty done. Now not burnt, like that one time, but definitely well done so um i like it crispy so i'm gonna do this I'll pull it out and let it let it cool down and i'll use this throughout the week i don't know how yet so um we'll figure it out but yeah i actually have an idea and i should not have cooked it all but it'll be all right it'll all turn out okay 
But there's my bacon. So I don't have a clean container to hold my bacon. So to help with portion control, I've got these Ziploc bags that Marie gave me. And uh, I'm putting a slice of bacon in each one. And then I'll put these inside of a bigger bag. So I just wanted to show you, you know, if you're like me, you have to do what you have to do for portion control. And so if I know that I'm reaching in and only getting one bag, then it will help me stay on track and not just reach in and say like, uh, today I'm gonna grab two slices of bacon. No, no, instead I'll just grab one of these baggies. So I'm gonna finish getting these and then we'll put them in a Ziploc bag. <clears throat> so here's what I did, I have four and this is the block baggie, and I'll, I'll keep this inside my refrigerator. And now, for any of them where the grease did not, um, you know, where the grease didn't dry out, they won't be all stuck together. So I'll put this one in the refrigerator with four, and these in the freezer with however many are in them. And then I'll be able to reach in and pull a few out whenever I want to pull them out for the week. So there's our bacon. With our pulled pork, I usually use, I think, about eight ounces. Uh, and this is cold. So this is going to be hard to scoop out. I might have to get something a little bit better. Hang on just a second here. Need something, need something metal. <coughs> Let's try this spoon. So I'm going to switch it to grams. No. Switch it to ounces. Okay. And like I said, I usually do about eight ounces. So if I zero this out, then whenever it says negative eight ounces, I'll know that that's the amount. Usually I weigh each container, but since this is cool, it won't, um, that's close enough, 8.8. .8, so I'll zero it. Because I added a whole bunch of liquid in here too. So, okay, what you got for me? Six, <clears throat> seven point nine. That's good. Zero it out. <clears throat> okay. can't have 7.9 I just can't do it okay Let's see what we got left okay, eight and then this will be one partial serving oh wait which is good because I have a partial serving of ground beef Yep, 4.7. So, there's my pulled pork. And I'm going to put this in the refrigerator. Or in the freezer. And I'll pull this out throughout the week. And that's got good flavor. So I took that bacon grease. Eh, this is gonna be too, too wide. I took the bacon grease, and uh, usually I know you all are gonna be like, "That's blasphemy, Terry, blasphemy." But I'm making dog treats out of it, same way I do my ground beef. But I might be having issues, so give me a second. Okay, I managed to get the bacon grease out. So it's very weird. Bacon grease acts different than ground beef grease. I'm not really sure why, but it does. So, uh, but either way, it's working. I got it out, and now I'm putting it into a container. So that way the dogs will have bacon grease bombs. 
as well as they had their ground beef bombs. So I'll put these back in the freezer and hopefully they'll hopefully they'll harden up a little bit. They're still a little bit soft, but like I said, this is my first time messing around with bacon grease for the dogs. Usually I save it in a container for me. And, and yes, I, I know that that's an option and this is probably blasphemy, but it's what I'm doing. So there we go. Now I'm gonna put these in the freezer and I will have some, hey Baxter, I will have some dog fat bombs. I'll give them each one now and I'll see you later. But there they are, doggy bacon bombs.